The question here is about as simple as it gets. We can take note that f must be an integer. That may be significant. Given that, let's move on to the data statements, evaluating them separately at first. In statement one, the textbook approach would be to multiply out the left side, bring over the 10, and solve the quadratic equation by factoring. However, we can note that f has to be an integer. The possibility f equals 2 might leap out because then f plus 3 equals 5, and 2 times 5 equals 10, plugging that into the equation. However, since we know that this is a quadratic equation in disguise, it may have another solution. The quadratic has two roots, and while those roots could be the same, they are often different. Often the other solution involves flipping a sign, and in fact, if we try f equals minus 5, then s plus 3 equals minus 2, and those multiplied together give 10. That's the other possibility. So there are two cases allowed by the data given, and they yield different values of f. So statement 1 is insufficient. Statement 2 has a somewhat bizarre appearance. Sometimes GMAT questions or statements are dressed up to be confusing looking. Let's introduce a temporary, what you could call intermediate variable, of g, which is 2f. If we have g, then we can rewrite the statement in a slightly simpler form. g to the g power is 256. That means that a certain number g, when taken to its own power, yields 256. Let's consider some cases. What is 2 to the power of 2? It's 2 squared, or 4. 3 to the power of 3 is 3 cubed, or 9 times 3 equals 27. 4 to the power of 4 is the same thing as 16 squared, and that's 256. That means that g is 4, and hence 2f is 4, and hence f equals 2. Therefore, we have a unique value of f, so statement 2 is sufficient. The correct answer is b.